Remember the childlike empress in the never-ending story? We do. But why did she just drop off the face of the earth? The answer will surprise you. Any 80s kid knows that the era was a time of soft parental neglect and being low-key traumatized by a variety of things, like your folks blowing smoke in your face, wandering the mean streets alone like Snake Plissken and hoping your face doesn't end up on a milk carton, and of course watching kids movies that were spiked with some pretty dark sequences. Who can forget renting the never-ending story on VHS and being irreversibly damaged by seeing Atreus' horse Artax drown in the bog? Rough stuff, truly. Even for the hardest of us. Between that scene and when Littlefoot's mom dies in the land before time, we all grew up with some light PTSD. However, the never-ending story is pretty chill, all things considered, thanks mostly to the fluffy look dragon, Falcor, and the beautiful young empress, Atreyu, is tasked with saving. To be honest though, we had to look up the cast list to remember what the girl's name was in the film. And she doesn't even have one. She's listed simply as Childlike Empress, and beyond that, we had to look up the actress's name too. And how to pronounce it. Str Strona? Str Strona. Strasnach Stronach. Hi, I'm Tammy Stronach. Stronach, there it is. Wait, what? It's not like this was her labyrinth and she went on to win an Oscar later in life like Jennifer Connolly, but that's where things get interesting and why we made this video in the first place. By the time Stronach played the childlike empress at the age of 10, she'd experienced far more than most of her peers. She was born in Iran to archaeologist parents. But the family moved to Israel when the Iranian Revolution began in 1979. After that, they lived in the UK for a while, before settling in California when Stranach was eight, so her father could teach her at the University of California, Berkeley. It's exhausting to even think about. It reminds me of when I had to switch to the school on the other side of town when I was a kid. It's totally the same thing! Anyway, Stranach's nomadic early life didn't keep her from her passion, musical theatre which she pursued throughout her childhood. Discovered by a casting director while rehearsing as Piglet for a production of Winnie the Pooh, Stranach auditioned and beat out Poltergeist star Heather O'Rourke for the role of the childlike empress. Did they choose her for her acting prowess? Or was it because they just didn't want to bring the Poltergeist curse to the never-ending story set and opted to settle for the safer option? We'll never know. Come on, Tammy, you know I'm just messing, right? Of course. While Americans know the film The Neverending Story to be set somewhere in North America, it's a solidly German movie. It was directed by a German. It's adapted from an incredibly popular fantasy novel by a German author. And it was shot at a German studio. Because of this, much of the film's promotion occurred throughout Germany, bringing a young Tammy Stronach to that country. Stronach didn't speak German, but during one stop on the national talk show circuit, the host asked if she had picked up any of the language. Why or she hadn't, she did have one charming ace up her sleeve. She explained to Vice in 2021, I said I don't know any German, but I know that song, 99 Luft Balloons, so being a ham, I sang it for them. Turns out Stranach's joke paid off with a new opportunity. After seeing her performance, a German producer offered to have her record some songs. The family planned on returning to the States in three days, so the producer wrote the songs that evening. The following day, they recorded the tracks, and Stronach filmed a music video and did a TV show appearance. Definitely a Rebecca Black sort of situation. Except her parents didn't have to pay someone $4,000 for the opportunity. Everything happened so quickly that the Stronach family didn't need to change their flight plans. Stronach recorded a music video for Fairy Queen, and that was the entirety of her childhood singing career. This was probably all for the best though, since her sudden stardom proved to be a handful. The never-ending story was a modest success at the global box office, and unfortunately for Stronach, the kind of attention thrown her way was intensively creepy and borderline criminal. Stronach was only 11 when the film came out in 1984, but that didn't stop a plethora of men from acting like her age was just a number. Several grown men discovered the family's address and loitered outside to see the childlike empress in real life. While that's creepy enough for any child to contend with, she also received an engagement ring from a German man. Stranach told Weiss, I found someone who was traveling to Germany and sent it back because I didn't want to take this person's money. 
I felt so guilty. You're too good-hearted for this work. The Stranach family opted to push beyond the creepiness and put the never-ending story in the past, while Tammy herself chose not to pursue further film projects and focused on growing up instead. Good job, losers. Really though, things worked out just fine for her. Stranach went on to dance professionally for the next 20 years, primarily in New York. During that time, she met and eventually married actor, writer, and producer Greg Steinbrenner, despite her best efforts to not hook up with another artist. As they say, Don't it where you eat. Not only did they start a theater company together, the Paper Canoe Company, but they also welcomed a daughter, Maya, into the world in 2011. Finding a work-life balance can be difficult for any parent, but Stranach set out to incorporate motherhood into her career, telling Vice, We live in a society that often asks professional women to pretend like they're not parents. I think it's so painful and so cruel. I wanted to say, I am a mom, and I'm a mom who works and has a brain and can use being a mom to make my work better. Sammy and Greg accomplished this by developing content aimed at children's theater, education, and film, always seeming to keep their daughter in mind. Stranach revealed her past as a childlike empress to Maya when she was three, blowing the young girl's mind with toys and photographs. She has also said that she would support Maya if she wanted to try her hand at acting, though her dad would prefer she went into the fields of medicine or law. Way less of a chance of being proposed to by a random creepy German guy, right? Deutschland is a land of Stottluten. And we will not take this Okay, so I lied a tiny bit. When I said she never pursued further film projects after the never-ending story, Stranach did have a minor role in a Czech TV movie called Freddy Ars Lat of Alaska in 2008. But that was seriously it until she showed up as a fictional version of herself in 2018's Ultra Low. After that, she took her return to acting a step further, when the uber-popular Netflix series Stranger Things thrust the never-ending story back into the spotlight with that iconic scene where Dustin's long-distance girlfriend Susie blackmails him into singing the theme song over the radio with her. Enough. The sudden resurgence of the film's popularity inspired Stranach and her husband to tap into the nostalgia craze with their own 80s-inspired fantasy film, Man and Witch. The film not only stars a couple themselves, but also a slew of stars who made the 80s a memorable decade for the fantasy genre. Christopher Lloyd, Sean Astin, Jennifer Saunders, Eddie Izzard, Sheree Agdashlu, and Michael Emerson, to name a few. Stronach's daughter, Maya, also has a part, her feature film debut. Beyond that, the film also includes puppets from the Jim Henson Creature Shop, adding to the overall lo-fi 80s theme. Ultimately, Stranach was only in the never-ending story for like 10 minutes. Still, she made a huge impact on people. So much so that she regularly hits up conventions to meet fans and discuss the role that made her a star. And that's not all. Like a good number of people seem to be doing these days, she started her own Etsy shop. And surprisingly, it offers hella cool never-ending story merch, including two types of autographed photos and a mug. The mug reads, the more coffee you drink, on the front, with the childlike empress below. On the back, a picture of Bastion reading sits below, the more magnificent Fantasia will become, which refers to the childlike empress's line. And the more wishes you make, the more magnificent Fantasia will become. She must be doing well with her shop because she has a 5-star rating and more than 700 sales. When she's not selling stuff on Etsy, Stranak spends much of her time dancing and teaching yoga. She loves yoga and has taught it in New York City for over 20 years. In addition to teaching classes locally, she also hosts classes via livestream in what she calls never-ending yoga, which certainly proves that even in her side gigs, she can't ever be too far away from the work that made her famous. <laughs> 